Hey everybody, it's Robert Preston, uh, Jr. again, DouglasNow.com. I'm back home. Uh, I've gotten a little information for those of you who were paying attention a few minutes ago. We were just live on the scene of another shooting uh, in on Roper Street there in the city just off of South Gaskin Avenue. I was uh, here at the house actually on a phone call and got a message that there had been a... Uh, there had been a shooting uh, down there on Roper Street. So I just rode down there to check it out. And those of you who were watching then saw what was going on. I showed a little bit of the crime scene, what little bit you could see. Once again, just to recap, there were five or four or five patrol cars down there that had an area of the, of the street blocked off. <laughs> there was a wrecker down there. The wrecker was outside the roped off area. But there was a white car that officers were investigating. It appeared to me to be a Nissan Altima or you know, a small sedan like that, four-door sedan. Uh, I've since found out a little bit more information. Again, nobody would speak at the scene and wouldn't say what had happened if anybody had been shot. There was no ambulance there, you know, so you couldn't tell. Apparently they had been down there for a few minutes, but someone was in fact shot. An individual was shot in the leg, non-life-threatening injuries, was taken to Coffee Regional Medical Center and then transferred out to a trauma center for further treatment. Uh, so again, uh, you know, the injuries, uh, from what I understand, were not life-threatening. So nobody's going to die, uh, at least not right now, not from that incident. You know, you always have to worry about retaliation and things like that because, as I understand, there's also been no arrest yet. Uh, so the individual who, who pulled the trigger, you know, or individuals, there were multiple shots fired. You could see that on the ground around the car. You could see the tags that they put out on the ground <laughs> that appeared to, I would, th I would say, showed shell casings or, or, or maybe some other type of evidence. But it looked like there had been multiple shots fired. Um, so, you know, there was, there's a lot going on down there right now. But anyway, fourth shooting in less than six weeks, if my math is correct on my dates, if it's not correct, it's not far off. So anyhow, that's what's happening around here now. I was talking, I mentioned this, when we were doing our election coverage earlier in the week. I was talking to someone at the polls, uh, um, an, older, an older woman at the polls Tuesday night who was telling me that no matter where she is in the city, she does not feel safe and she doesn't like to go out past dark. And it gets dark at six o'clock. If you don't feel safe at night and you don't want to leave your house, you, a lot of your time you're going to be spent inside uh, as, early as, it, as early as the sun sets now. So uh, anyway, that's kind of the state that we're, uh, that we're in here in Douglas and Coffee County. It troubles me. And I know it's very easy to sit here from my standpoint and say, well, you've just got to get tougher on crime. And I, I know that there, there are a lot of considerations that law enforcement has to take into account when they're investigating crimes and when they're going about uh, their, uh, 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 their cases and their investigations or what have you. But I don't think that it is as complicated as some people like to make it out to those of us in the general public. Quite simply, what you have to do, I've said this before and I'll say it again, that most of this stuff happens because of drugs. It doesn't, happen, doesn't matter where it happens in the city, in what neighborhood, what area of town, what area of the county, somehow, some shape, form, or fashion, in some way, it all comes back, about 90% of it, if not more than that, comes back to drugs in some shape, form, or fashion. And what you have to do is you have to make our community an unwelcome place for drug dealers. And if you do that, they will go somewhere else. Make them leave here. Make them ply their trade in another community, not here. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again, again, that I don't think that there is a great deal of concern about drugs in Coffee County. The only people who are really concerned about drugs are those who are personally affected by it. And I'm not talking about just in terms of of, uh, of, of people in positions of authority or uh, the general public. Most people aren't concerned about drugs, all right? You can see it in court cases. You can see it in the number of convictions. Maybe the better way to put it would be the number of acquittals that happen in drug cases, the number of drug cases that get reduced 
the times that juries convict on lesser sentences when there's evidence in court that says they had or a subject had uh, a certain amount of illegal drugs and juries reduce the sentence or reduce the charge and, and convict on it and knock years and years off of sentences because of that. That happens all the time. Nick Cruz is telling me I'm going to get another shout out from the sheriff's office. I'll probably get a shout out from somebody. But listen, you know, we've got an election coming up in about a year and a half. And, uh, you know, I'm going to beat this drum until somebody does something about it. And I hope that other people will do the same. You know, what we tend to forget is that in our country, and this goes at the state level, the national level, the local level, at whatever level it is, citizens are given a great deal of authority in how they are governed. Our founding fathers made sure of that. So we can dictate the tide and the direction and whatever of our leadership if we will take that responsibility and take those opportunities seriously and make the most of them. But too many times we sit by and ask the government to help us. And when we do that, we're inviting trouble. I was talking to some, with somebody about this yesterday. We should not be looking to the government to solve all of our problems. We should not be sitting around and waiting on them to come in and fix everything that's wrong. Okay, we don't need them to expand their power and to reach into our personal lives any more than they already do. But there are some things that government is supposed to do and there are some things that government is tasked to do. And one of those things is to protect the citizenry. That's their job. That's one of their, one of the, 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 the small um, number of expressly stated powers that government has given is to create a safe environment for its citizens. And I'll go on trial on record right now. Again, said it many times. I'll keep saying it until it changes. I don't feel safe in Coffee County. I don't think our community is as safe as it has been in the past. And when you sit here and you look at what's going on and you look at where we are and you look at this that's happened, you had the bowling alley, was it October 29th, October 28th, 29th somewhere in there. You come back on November the 18th and we had a fatal shooting in broad daylight on a Sunday morning within a stone's throw of about five churches. Churches are having service, all right? About the time they got shot, people were getting in, were getting in the sanctuary, were pulling up. That's what's going on in the shadow of one of the most influential Baptist churches in Coffee County, a block away from Eastside Baptist Church. As people are gathering to worship, someone gets shot in the back and dies November 18th. Then you're coming back, I don't remember what it was, a couple days ago, December 4th, 5th, something like that, a few days ago. We have a shooting out in the Oak Park area on Poplar Street. Two people got in a shootout, and they both got shot. Also, by the way, I have, I have sought uh, comment on that and information on that shooting for a couple of days to find out exactly what happened. I have sent uh, a number of messages uh, to the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, different officers trying to get somebody to round up some information and make a statement to me, and they have not done so. So I've been trying to get information on that, and I have not received it. So, you know, I don't know why that is, but, you know, that's the way it is. But that shooting happened. Uh, so, you know, that was a couple of days ago. Then today, I'm able to go live at 6.30, 7 o'clock, whenever it was, 5.30, I don't remember. I think it was between 5.30 and 6 o'clock. I'm able to go live and say, hey, we made an arrest in the shooting that took place on November 18th. We got somebody charged with felony murder, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, and possession of a firearm during the commission of certain crimes. Okay, if that if that sticks, that individual is going away. It is going away for life. He's seen his last day of freedom. His last day of freedom was yesterday. That was the last full day that he will be free. Was yesterday. Okay, he's going to stay in jail until he goes to trial. If he gets convicted, and hopefully there's a strong enough case, if he did, he needs to be convicted. If he didn't get convicted, then, uh, excuse me, if, he, if he's not the person who did it, he doesn't need to get convicted. But if, in fact, he is, uh, then he's going to go from court to prison, and he'll never get out.
he was 29 years old. Uh, guy's 29 years old, so you know he'll be in jail for the rest of his life. <clears throat> but uh, um, but we were just able to talk about that. Hey, we got this thing solved. It appears again this individual is innocent until proven guilty, but we've made an arrest. And I thought that was you know kind of a light at the end of the tunnel here. But now a few hours later, we're back where we were. We've got a shooting, a victim, somebody else transported to a trauma center, and now you've got folks worried about potential retaliation here because there's a shooter or shooters out on the street, okay? We have somebody saying the GBI needs to step in and investigate a lot that's happening in Coffee County. Let me explain something to you. I, I, I get along well with our, our, our GBI office here in Douglas. Um, and I, I've had a lot of dealings with, with, with the GBI over the years with different special agents and different investigators. I would like to see some agency from out of town come in and take a look. Somebody who does not work here. Because listen, if you don't think politics come into law enforcement, if you don't think that has an effect on things, it absolutely does. It absolutely does in so many cases. You know, justice should be blind, the facts should be blind, but it's not. There are all kinds of other things that come into play with these investigations. And I'm not saying that anybody is corrupt, but what I would like to see is with what's happening and with the direction that we're going, is an outside agency come in and at least handle some of these investigations, at least provide some type of oversight or some type of assistance. Of course, if somebody offers, if an agency offers, probably I'm just guessing that the locals are going to say, we don't need you. Why are you coming in here? You don't know how to police our community better than we do. And as I stand here and look around and see four shootings in less than six weeks, I say, somebody needs to do something about this. And again, I, when, when I say this stuff, I want to be very... Um, I want to be very, uh, um, uh, what's the right word? I want to make sure that people understand I'm not talking about the rank and file police officers, okay, with our deputies, with our Douglas City police officers, with our officers uh, in the outlying communities in, in Broxton and in Nichols, and then you get down even into Pearson and Willacoochee and places like that. I'm not talking about the officers on the streets. They want to enforce the law. They want to make the arrest. They know who the, who the offenders are. They know what they need to do, but it's not always easy to do that. It's not always easy to convince their supervisors or their superiors to go after certain individuals. It does come down to politics. And then uh, Charlie Sims is saying probation system needs to be more proactive as well. Listen, the whole system needs to be more proactive. From the time people are arrested, what would be interesting, and, and I, I hate to make an excuse and say I don't have the resources or the time, but right now I really don't have the resources or the time, but it's something I would like to do and I would love to follow this, to take a couple of cases from the time an individual is convicted even if it's on a relatively minor drug charge or something like that, but the time an individual is convicted and follow that case all the way through till it's, or excuse me, from the time a person's arrested and charged till their case is, uh, uh, is taken care of in court. I think if, if we did this, if we were able to follow this all the way through, we would find that there are way more acquittals and drop charges and reduce charges and things like that than, you, than we would imagine. And you and I imagine sitting here thinking about it. We probably know generically there's a lot. That happens a lot. But if we knew the true number, I think it would be really scary. And you're seeing that right now. I mean, one of the guys involved in the shooting the other night out in Oak Park, one of the guys involved in that shooting out there um, uh, was either out on parole or out on probation from a violent crime that happened a very short period of time ago. I say a very short period of time ago. I think it was a couple of years ago, maybe something like that, enough that he should still be in prison. And now here he is. And, and I mean, in that instance, it's, it's probably bad guys, uh, you know, shooting bad guys. And uh, sometimes it's hard to get outraged about that. But this stuff spills over. Look, you go down there on Roper Street where I just was, there, that, 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 you know, there's a, there's a lot of nice community, uh, uh, nice houses down there. It's a nice little neighborhood, 
okay? And it's right next to a school. Just a few hours ago, there were kids out there. There were kids out there at the ninth grade academy. I mean, you could, you could take a baseball and a bat and hit a ball from where the shooting happened to the property of the ninth grade academy. You don't have to be a good hitter to do that either. Uh, uh, somebody's asking where the shooting took place. It took place on Roper Street, um, right off of South Gaskin Avenue, which is um, a block or two south of the ninth grade academy. That's where that's where it took place, <clears throat> in front of a in front of a house out there. But there are kids who live there. Um, you know, some, some some nice little houses in that neighborhood. And you've got to shoot. I mean, come on. I don't know. I get frustrated, and it's also. 1230 and my plan when I got done with our middle school swim meet tonight was to have already had about two hours in the bed right now asleep and yet we're still awake and we're still doing this and we're still talking about yet another shooting so once again my message to you to the 15 people who are watching right now 16 uh, we got 16 to those of you who are watching if you're unhappy about this you have the power, the influence, the authority, the whatever to change it if you want to. Otherwise, we can continue to sit back. We can continue to believe the same tired promises, the same statements year in and year out and vote for the same people. I just had a meeting with some folks, with, with folks in our office today, we were talking about tweaking some things headed, in, you know, in our business headed into the new year, because there's some things we need to do differently. And I kept thinking about it. I said, and you know, the old, and, and it's, it's, there's so much wisdom in it, but it's so, it's repeated so often. It's become such a cliche that it's, it's hard to take it seriously. But you know, you know this very well. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. And at some point, we all need to make some changes. But if we continue to follow the same path that we've been taking, all right, with our voting habits uh, or our voting trends and with what we allow ourselves, what we allow into our community, if we don't take some type of stance and stop it and let our voice be heard, we're going to continue to get what we're getting which are shootings, which are property crimes and thefts. There was an armed robbery tonight. Somebody was walking down the sidewalk in a nice neighborhood. I got a call about this a few hours ago. In fact, as I was signing off from downtown when I did the live video down there, I got a phone call that said, hey, there was an armed robbery on a street. And I can't remember what street it was, but I remember thinking, you know, that, that, that that's a pretty, you know, pretty decent neighborhood. A woman was walking down the street with a pocketbook. A van pulled up beside her beside her, opened up the door, hopped out, snatched a purse, and took off going down the road. That happened in the city tonight. Really not even at night. It hadn't gotten quite dark yet, probably around 6 o'clock, 6.30, somewhere in that neighborhood. All right? In a neighborhood in the city, that happened. That's what we live in. That's what's going on around us. And I don't like it. And I do have the opportunity. I have this this uh, this platform to talk and to discuss things. But if you agree with me, get behind me and communicate with the people who represent you, whether it's at the county level, the state level, at the national level, whoever. You have the influence to shape the direction that our community goes if you'll take it. If you'll take it. It's frustrating. People will talk about you. I'm going to get talked about for this. After I made the statements I did outside the shooting, uh, at the scene of the shooting on November 11th, uh, 11th. <laughs> you can tell it's late, on November the 18th, what happened to me? You know, I got called fake news, uh, which, is really, which is really kind of funny. I got called fake news. I had other individuals talking about me on Facebook. They didn't call me by name, but I knew what they were talking about. Uh, and I got a lot of phone calls by, hey, did you see what so-and-so said? What's, you know, and, and, and a lot of them were, were law enforcement officers who were talking about me. And again, I think they misinterpreted what I said to a degree. Officers want to do their jobs. 
the officers on the streets want to work. They want to make the arrests. They want to make the cases. They want to get these people off the streets, but a lot of times their hands are tied. So anyhow, if you agree with me, take the initiative, be willing to take the risk, put yourself out there, and let your voice be heard. That's how you make that. That's how things get changed. But if we continue, if we continue to put up with and allow what we uh, what we're allowing right now, then this is what our children are going to grow up with. This is what our grandchildren are going to grow up with. This is the way our community is going to go. I didn't mean to get off on this tangent. I simply want to tell you guys what happened. Once again, for those uh, who, who may have just signed on, uh, we reported earlier from, our, uh, from the scene of a shooting on Roper Street. I didn't have any information on exactly what went on. After I left the scene and came back home, I learned that one individual was shot, was shot in the leg. It's a pretty nasty wound, uh, I believe, but it's, it's not life-threatening. Still, uh, he was taken to Coffee Regional Medical Center. The folks at Coffee Regional transferred him out to a trauma center. So once again, I mean, it's not life-threatening, but it's, it's going to be a long, slow recovery and going to be an inconvenience for a long time. So we had that. Had an arrest earlier today in the Terrence Gibson shooting, the fatal shooting on November 18th. And now here we are a couple of hours later, we've got another shooting in the city. So, you know, four shootings in our community in less than six weeks. That's where we are. We should be singing Christmas carols and drinking hot chocolate and, you know, finishing putting up our decorations and all that stuff. We just had the Christmas parade last night for crying out loud. And here we are dodging bullets in Coffee County. So that's where we are. That's what's happening. Did not mean to rant. Thank you for listening. Y'all go to bed. <laughs> that's what I'm about to do. I wanted, I wanted to get up. And, 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 and go hunting in the morning, but I don't know that I'm going to make it now. I'm a couple hours late. Charlie Sims is saying that the police department is working with a skeleton crew. That's something else that's worth mentioning as well, that our police department and our sheriff's department are understaffed. They really are. There are a lot of vacancies in both, in both departments. And one issue, of course, is pay. We've talked about that. Our police officers don't get paid enough. And I don't care where you work, your police officers don't get paid enough. But particularly here in Coffee County, you don't get paid. Uh, officers do not get paid. Um, um, well, they just don't get paid enough. And if you don't pay people, you're not going to get people. Particularly with the with the uh, the risk and the danger and what have you that goes with being a police officer. You know, if you want people to put themselves out there, you've got to put yourself out there to give them what they need and give them the resources they need to do their job. And part of that involves pay. So, yes, uh, I think that is a point worth mentioning. Now, if you want to ask why that's the case, it is about pay, but it's about more than pay. There's more than just that involved. There are a lot of other issues that go along with why we have an understaffed police force in Coffee County. That will be a topic for another day. But thanks for bringing that up, Charlie. That is very much something that needs to be addressed. And again, that's something we need to be asking questions about. Why is that the case? You can't police if you don't have the people to put on the force. It's about pay, but it's about a lot more. Our community is not safe. This is not the same community that we all grew up in. It can be, but we're going to have to take the initiative and steer us in that direction. And if we're forceful enough, our elected officials will follow our lead if we are strong enough and if we show them that we are serious because they'll do anything for votes. And if we tell them we're not going to vote for them unless they do something differently, they'll do something differently. May not want to, but they will because uh, power and authority and all that is very addictive. And people will hold on to their influence with their dying breath. And that's what we can use to leverage against those folks who don't want, uh, who don't want to do, in my opinion, who don't want to do what they need to do to make our community safer. Anyway, I'm gonna get off this rant and try to go to bed and get some rest. Thank y'all for watching. That's where we are. You have a voice. We have a voice. 
let's use it. If we don't like what's happening, let's use our voice to steer our community in the right direction. Y'all have a good night and a safe weekend. We get any more information, we'll update you as it comes in. Thank you guys for watching. See ya.